This is the Married to Doctors podcast, episode number four. Right, right before the wedding, um, he got one of those interview requests, and it happened to be in New York City, and it was during the time that we would be there for our mini moon. So he oh looked at me, and I looked at him, and we said, well, you know, I guess we've got to do it. So on our mini moon, there was one day and one night when my husband, my new husband, John, was at a residency interview while we were in New York. <laughs> um, it's like foreboding of what's to come in your marriage, <laughs> yeah. right? Welcome to the Married to Doctors podcast, because we know that being married to a doctor isn't always as glamorous as it sounds. Our podcast helps successful homes be happier. We're here to build community, hear your stories, and explore solutions with the experts. Here's your host, Laura McKeldry. Hi, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. I sure am having a good time putting them together for you. I want to take a minute and wish you all a very Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays, however you're celebrating. I hope you're getting a little time with your families. For those of you that are married to doctors, I know that holidays can be tough. You may be living away from your family. You may not have your significant other by your side today as they are at the hospital taking care of those in need. Just want you to know that I've been there and I understand and you are not alone. Happy holidays to each of you. You guys, I got my first review. It's so exciting. I got a few on iTunes and I also had one come in to my Facebook page. I have a little Married to Doctors Facebook business page. It's not like a big group or anything, but you can go in there and like the page and then message me from there. It's so awesome. I wanted to share it with you. So this is from Anissa and she said, I wanted to send you a message letting you know how excited I am for this podcast. I've already listened to everything so far and I'm so excited for the upcoming episodes. We are currently in year two of my husband's general surgery residency, and he wants to eventually get into a critical care surgical fellowship. It has been a long road and will continue to be challenging. There really isn't much out there for us, the doctor's wife. I had always wished for a book on advice and knowledge to help get us through this journey, but could never find anything. Now there is this podcast. It is literally a breath of fresh air. So thank you so much for starting this up. It is everything I have been searching for. Happy holidays too. So thank you so much. That really made my day to read this from someone I've never met. You know, that's the intention of the podcast is to support and strengthen families and each other as we go through these crazy medical journeys. Today's episode is going to be super fun. I have two guests, Jenny Slate Grixham and Jamie Hilton. These two wonderful ladies have agreed to come on and share their stories about their weddings, their honeymoons, and how they celebrate anniversaries. It's going to be a great episode, so let's jump right in. Jenny, thank you so much for being willing to talk on the Married to Doctors podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, this is going to be super fun. So before we get into your crazy story, go ahead and give us a little (laughs) bit about your background and just introduce yourself to us. Sure. I'm Jenny Slate Grishkin, and I have been married to my husband, John, for, it was 13 years this past November. We live in Columbus, Ohio. We have two kids, Noah, who is 10, and Kate, who is five and a half. I am now a stay-at-home mom. I do some freelance editing on the side. I'm involved in our community. What else can I tell you? John is a pediatric otolaryngologist, so that is my connection to the Married to Doctors podcast. All right. And when you got married 13 years ago, where were you guys at as far as um, Uh. training? (laughs) John was a third year medical student. Oh, no, sorry. He was a fourth year medical student when we actually got married. We got engaged his second year. He was on the road to finishing up medical school. And how did you guys go about deciding a wedding date during that crazy time of finishing (laughs) up and everyone's getting ready for the match? So how did that work out? We got engaged in March of his second year, and we're both Jewish, and one Jewish tradition is that you're not supposed to get married during our Sabbath, which is from sundown on Friday night to sundown on Saturday night. And so for people who pay attention, the sun goes down in the summer pretty late, 
Um, and so we didn't want to have a wedding that started on a Saturday night at, you know, 8.30 at night. I don't want to wait and eat <laughs> my meal at midnight. I didn't want to have people partying till three in the morning. So that was one consideration. A lot of uh, Jewish couples will actually get married on a Sunday of a holiday weekend. So there, you know, there's a lot of Jewish weddings on Labor Day weekend or Memorial Day weekend on Sunday night, you'll notice, because it's a Sunday, but there's still you know, work the next day for a lot of people. So it's a nice way to do it. We did not want to have a wedding on a holiday weekend. So we kind of figured out that if we waited until the late fall, the sun goes down at a more reasonable earlier time, you know, around 6.30 or so. So that's what we did. We chose November 6th as our wedding date because sunset on a Saturday was around, you know, 6.30. We were able to get married, have dinner at a decent time, <laughs> dance, and send people on their way. You know, we weren't sure if we'd be able to pull off a wedding in six months. You know, we got engaged in March. I didn't know if we'd be able to pull it together. Probably looking back, we totally could have. So we were engaged for 18 months. We got uh, engaged in March. We waited, you know, a whole year and a half to then get married in November of fourth year. At the time, John did not know, when we got engaged, he did not know what specialty he wanted to go into. And we didn't think it would matter because match is in the spring. So perfect fall wedding. We'll do way rotations and match in the spring. Otolaryngology, the match system was an early match. So the two months prior to our wedding, he spent a month in Washington, the state of Washington out in Seattle. And he spent a month in Baltimore. And this was during the two months leading up to our wedding. I was getting all the gifts and writing all the thank you notes and taking care of all the last minute stuff. He was pretty happy not to be around. I think it worked out actually kind of well. And then all of his interviews, um, invitations started cropping up right around the time of our wedding. He was asked actually to come down. I don't want to call it the program, but he was asked to come to an interview on the day of our wedding. And they said, and it was driving distance away. And they said, oh no, you know, come on down. We'll have you back in time. And I said, there is no way. There's no You've way. You've got to be kidding. Yeah. I just want the listeners to pause and think about this. And if we have any listeners out there that are not married to doctors, just consider this for a minute. This is how medicine works in our lives, you guys. Like they own us. They mm -hmm. think they should have us on our wedding day. This yep. is <laughs> That's and it was insane. hard because, you know, you don't want to turn down an interview because you never know, um, you know, if you might like the program or if, if that's where you might match. So it, it is kind of a tough decision to say no to these programs. Um, but he did and it worked out. But as we will find out that it kind of affected our little honeymoon as well. That is crazy. So for anyone who doesn't know how match works, when you finish your fourth year of medical school, or sometime during the fourth year, I should say, you start to make a list of any program you want to attend. And in order to put someplace on that list, you have to interview there. So by him not attending this interview, he couldn't then put it on his list, which means that one is completely off the table now. So that was a big deal for him to pass up on that interview. All right. So keep going then. How did the actual wedding go? Did so you guys stick with great. November 6th? <laughs> Actually, his best friend, who went to a different a different medical school, ended up with an interview that day also. And he did take the interview. And he drove in. He put on his tuxedo at, I think, a truck stop so he could be there in time for a wedding. He's not in any of our pictures, you know, the pretty pictures. He's in all the, the you know, the party pictures. But he made it there just in the nick of time. So... Anyway, um, the wedding was great. We had our friends and family there. It was a wonderful night. Um, everything was smooth sailing. So it, it was great, great memories. That's awesome. And now the honeymoon. Dun, dun, the dun, honeymoon. dun. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we were very lucky um, that my parents paid for our wedding, which was amazing and wonderful and so generous. And we had some other family members who had mentioned um, funding our honeymoon. And unfortunately, it didn't end up working out. We were, you know, poor. He was a poor medical student and I was working, but, you know, not making a ton of money. So we didn't really have a huge budget for a honeymoon. So we decided what we would do is take a mini moon. You know, because by this time we knew that it was interview season and we really didn't have a lot of time to devote to a vacation. So we would take a mini moon directly after the wedding and then maybe take a bigger trip that spring. So we decided to go to New York City, um, which is always fun, you know, around this time of year. We decided we'd go to a really great restaurant. We'd see a Broadway show. We'd stay in kind of a fancy to us hotel, um, walk around the city. It would be a great time. 
right, right before the wedding, um, he got one of those interview requests and it happened to be in New York City and it was during the time that we would be there for our mini moon. So he oh looked at me and I looked at him and we said, well, you know, I guess we've got to do it. So on our mini moon, there was one day and one night when my husband, my new husband, John, was at a residency interview while we were in New York. <laughs> um, it's like foreboding of what's to come in your marriage, <laughs> <yeah>. right? <laughs> And, you know, I tried to be a good sport. And luckily, my best friend lived in New York City at the time. And my brother lived in New York City at the time. So my best friend and I spent the day together. There was like a chocolate festival going on. So we went and tried all these chocolates. And my brother and his roommate and I went out to dinner for tapas. And, you know, so I wasn't alone, but I wasn't with my new husband on our mini moon. <laughs> oh man, um, what an example of how the medical uh, world can own us yep. sometimes. Yikes. Yep. Yes. So that was, that is always kind of a, a fun story. And, you know, at the time we laughed, I'll be honest, I was disappointed to not have sort of that, you know, that movie bridal moment where you're whisked off to some tropical island or you're headed to Paris or something fabulous. We we didn't have that. You know, we got on this little plane to New York and he went his way and I went my way for a day or so. Um, we still did get to do some of those other fun things, um, but we never had that. And then in the spring, we did take another trip. We went to, we still, you know, didn't have a lot of money. We went to Napa in California and went to some wineries and ate at some good restaurants. But that wasn't my dream. That wasn't my, you know, what I had always wanted. But, you know, you, you do what you can do. And it's a great story. And, and we still have some good memories. But I do feel a little cheated <laughs> that I never got the, the fabulous honeymoon that I know so many folks get to take. Yeah. Well, the good thing is 13 years in and you guys are doing okay. So totally. you must you be doing work. something right, right. right? <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any trips planned in the future? Are you like, okay, we're going to take a month, you yeah. know, uh, in 2020 and go to that well, tropical island? You know, or... and that's the thing. It's really hard, as you know, and I'm sure a lot of your listeners know, once you are sort of in the system and you're working, it's really hard to take off a bunch of time, especially if you don't work for yourself. My husband works for the hospital and he's only allowed, you know, a certain number of vacation days and with family obligations and holidays and all those other little things that come up, it's, it's really hard to find, you know, more than a week to sort of dedicate to just a, a relaxing, luxurious vacation. And, and now we have kids and that's hard too, finding people to be with your kids and even being away from them is tricky. You don't necessarily always want to be gone that long and it's, it's a little hard. Um, we did take a really nice trip for our 10th anniversary. We went to Italy, which was wonderful. And we enjoyed that. And we have been on some really nice trips to Mexico and the beach. I'm hoping maybe that for number 15, we'll go to Hawaii. So we'll, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Maybe if I say it out loud, you know, kind of out to the world of all your listeners, it'll happen. It'll manifest. <laughs> so here's awesome. hoping. That's good. So I guess if we had to give advice to medical students or anyone dating a medical student, we would say plan <laughs> that wedding date carefully, right? Oh man, yeah. And and you never know. You know, things change the way now there is no early match, so that you know you don't have to worry about that. It's it's all in the spring, but that could change, I guess, at any any given moment. And and things change and and that's even how it is today. My husband got a call the other night, um, you know, oh, can you take call for me? You know, like, okay, so last minute you're taking call for someone and, and you just kind of have to roll with the punches and go with it. Yeah. It starts, as you heard from the stories, everyone out there, it <laughs> starts from medical school on. It does not change. Right? Nope. Nope. Um, so what's something you and your husband do that keeps your marriage strong? Where do you guys get it right? And <laughs> along with that, you know, you can leave us with any advice you'd want to give the listeners. Sure, well, I, it kind of goes hand in hand. I I really think it's important to get away, you know, not every month, but I think once a year, at least it's really important as a couple that we go away, just the two of us. And we kind of remember what it's like to be just the two of us, even though I love our children. It's important just to have that bonding time and that time away from the charts and the papers and the bills, just to sort of refresh and renew. And we have a lot of fun, you know, having adventures and creating memories. That's my advice. We also, um, we try and do date nights almost every Saturday night that we can, which ends up being about twice a month between call and obligations. But we really try 
and carve out time for us, just the two of us. And I, I highly recommend that to anyone who's going through this process. And it doesn't even have to be a date out. We were supposed to go out this Saturday, our sitter canceled. So instead we're gonna play video games in the basement, just the two of us without the children. <laughs> and that's kind of our, our special time together. I recommend that highly to anyone who's starting on this journey as a couple. Awesome advice. Well, Jenny, this has been so fun. Thank you for sharing your <laughs> wonderful story with us and leaving us with some great advice on how to spend time together. And I really appreciate you. This is fantastic. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Jamie, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us today. Are you nervous? I am so nervous, Laura. I have that like sweaty, cold hand sweat going on, but we can do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love that you're willing to talk to us. That's so brave of you. And that's really one of my goals with the show is just to get, you know, I'm going to have some experts on and some people that have podcasting experience, but I absolutely want to talk to just down to earth doctor wives. So, and well, doctor husbands. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Yes. So thank you so much. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how long you've been married and just, you know, your background. Oh. Okay. Um, so my husband's name is Sam. Um, we have been married 10 years. I'm from Atlanta. He's from um, Wyoming, a little tiny town of Wyoming. Um, we met in Atlanta. He was, um, his sister lived in Georgia where I was, and she kind of connected us when I was 16 and he was 20. And uh, we met and he had zero interest in me whatsoever at the time. Um, but when I saw him, I was uh, completely madly in love with him and he didn't know it. And I was like totally gaga for him. And uh, we, I conned him to go on a date with me, basically a group date. And then I made all my friends cancel. So it was just him and I. <laughs> and um, we go out on this date and he tries to have a good time. I'm once again, like completely in love at this point. I've talked to him once, I think, and obsessing over him. And um, we have a good time, exchange numbers at the end. And he like never calls me or texts me after that. And then two years later, um, out of the blue, he called me up and he's like, Hey, this is Sam Hilton. I was like, um, are you serious? And he's like, yeah. And we ended up talking on the phone for two months straight. Um, and decide on um, like two months in that we wanted to get married and that we loved each other over the phone. And then four months after that, we got married and had three kids together. We have got a four, five, and six-year-old, two girls and a boy. And um, he is in his first year of residency for orthopedic surgery. Oh my goodness. That's an amazing story. You guys fell in love pretty quickly then once you started talking again. Yes. Yes, we totally did. We just, it was one of those, I mean, you know, you know, type things. I love that. So what has been difficult as far as like keeping the love alive in your marriage? Anything been kind of tricky since going down the medical school path and residency? Yeah, I feel like most of it's pretty tricky. <laughs> I feel like marriage is so hard. I you know, I went into marriage at 19, having no clue, like totally in that bubble, you know, that everything's going to be perfect and life's going to be, you know, just like smooth and we love each other. You know, the whole is my first relationship ever. <laughs> and it knocked me down, like off my feet, like first year, you know, and um, it's one of those things where you when you're going through those hard times, you have to remember what brought you together and that love. And I think a huge thing for us getting through medical school and starting residency and having three kids, you know, uh, six and under now is to remember like what, where that flame that you had at the very beginning and trying to keep that, you know, rekindling that constantly has been key for us. I love that you say that. I do think we have to continue to fan the flame, so to speak, of our marriages and of our love. And you guys just had your 10th year anniversary. Is that right? Yes, we did. It was so much fun, by the way. Yeah. Congratulations <laughs> on that. <laughs> I really you. want to ask you about this. Um, did you plan that date or did your hubby plan it? I absolutely planned it. Um, as you know, our husbands or wives that work in the industry have zero time. I feel like it's just constantly eaten up. So it, it fell on me, not fell on me. I enjoyed planning it. So it was, it was all me. 
Good. Well, tell us what in the world you planned. I was laying in bed. It was like one in the morning when you start Googling things that don't matter. And <laughs> I'm thinking about our, you know, coming up on this 10 year. And I kept thinking, I don't remember like anything we've done in the last 10 years for our anniversary. Like I don't remember. And that was sad to me. And I shamefully to say, I don't know why we've never done anything big or memorable, but I was like, you know what, this year's going to be different. You know, we don't have money. We don't have the time, but I'm going to make it memorable. And right when I thought that I, it, it, it just came in like a ton of bricks. I'm like, don't I still have my, you know, wedding dress? And I was like, I bet I still fit in that darn thing, right? That I should have gotten <laughs> rid of years ago. And so the next day, actually that night, I texted my mom and sister were pretty close. And I was like, what do y'all think about? And I just kind of ran through in my mind. What if I got a cake, a wedding topper and got it like customized? And what if I got like sparkling champagne and like, you know what I mean? And wore our wedding dress and painted on our car. And they were like, wow, that sounds super fun. But good luck trying to get your husband to do that like out in public. <laughs> and so I almost woke him up at this point. It's like two in the morning. I was going to, I was so excited about, it. I was going to wake him up and be like, Hey, guess what I thought of? But I was like, you know what? He wouldn't appreciate that. He's got shift <laughs> in the morning at four 30. <laughs> so um, the next day I went and tried on my wedding dress and it zipped up halfway. I was like, but I can do this. Like I can make this work. And um, <laughs> sure enough, I put the idea to him and he was all about it, which I was a little shocked, but he was all about it. So that is what we did. So I wore my wedding dress. He wore just his nicest suit, the one he wore for uh, medical school graduation, and our colors for our wedding were red and blue, so um, he wore a blue tie, you know, all that, and um, I got a wedding topper and got S plus J in red on it. Um, I got some sparkling champagne since we don't drink, and I told him we're going to Waffle House because that's our favorite place to go um, <laughs> as we're broke and it's open 24 hours. So that's I what absolutely so love I this. Did. My husband yes. loves Waffle House. I might not <laughs> think that sounds like a fun wedding anniversary <laughs> date, but my husband <laughs> would have loved this plan. He's all about scattered, and smothered, whatever, whatever. He loves it. Yes, yes. Everything on it. Yes. And, you know, we, we, we both just have a major love. That was one of our things the first couple of years before kids. I mean, we were always sitting up Waffle House at 12, 1 o'clock after watching a movie. And, you know, it's good memories. So that's a huge part for us. And I know he, when we sat down at dinner at Waffle House, he was like, are you sure you don't want to go to like Longhorns or, you know, somewhere more dressed up really nice, Jamie? I was like, no, this is like, this is the whole, you know, this is what makes it fun. You know what I mean? It's like, not, it's fancy, but not fancy at the same time. But anyway, so it was amazing. So I went out there uh, before he got home and I strapped cans to the back of the, the minivan and um, I wrote just married and then I crossed out the just and put 10 years. And I just decorated all like that, got the cake. Um, and we got to walk off. Of course, people were, you know, congratulations and all that. <laughs> and I totally, like 100% people were going for it. And I, I'm not the type that can be like, oh, thank you. Like, I was like, it's our 10 year. I had to tell them what was going on. But people loved it. They were like, wow, like, that's really cool. You know, at 10 years that they're going out and being silly, you know, because that's, the whole point and that's why I was saying earlier you know life is so hard and can just slap you across the face with med school and all these hard trials that you have to keep it silly that's like crucial you know absolutely well you nailed it girl you nailed it I love that you had your wedding dress like zipped halfway so then did you like have a scarf or a jacket Oh, I totally, I borrowed a friend's jacket, a nice little leather jacket, and I threw it over, and you would have never known. Like, I sailed right through it. My husband didn't even know. So I was like, yes, that's worth it. Yes, you go, girl. You worked it. That is yeah. the best story right. ever. I love it. And I will have pictures up on our website if anybody wants to check out the romantic Waffle House 10-year anniversary date. <laughs> Very fun. Waffle House was pretty great about it, too. They brought out, like, juice cups, like, smaller cups for our sparkling cider you know like made them like you know when they brought out like for the cake they brought three different knife sets out like went over the top for a waffle house and it was just and I, I made a slideshow a four-minute slideshow with one of our favorite songs of our children and 
our marriage thus far. And it, and it only cost me 50 bucks. The entire date was $50 from start to finish. And I feel like that's pretty affordable for a 10th year anniversary. So yeah, I, I think so. I think you definitely hit a home run with this. Just a couple more questions I wanted to ask you since you seem to be good at uh, making your marriage fun. Do you have any words of wisdom <laughs> for those that are struggling to come up with something fun? Oh, well, I am not the best at words of wisdom, but I can tell you things we have done that might be ideas. We have never had financially been, you know, solid. We've always been in school or in training and I've been a stay at home for home mom for most of the time. So we haven't had a lot of money to just spend frivolously just on whatever. Um, so we've gotten creative. Um, Sam knows that I like massages. My, one of my uh, love languages is physical touch. So I've come home from like a long weekend and I remember one time I went to, it's like go to the downstairs room and everything you need is waiting for you. And I'm like, what is he talking about? Right? Like, what are you talking about? So I go downstairs and he's got his chiropractic, you know, massage table from medical school whipped out with like a diffuser and like tranquil music and everything I need for a two hour massage and completely free. But you know what I mean? It's exactly what your spouse needs. Um, so we do a lot of things that, you know, thinking outside of yourself, not as much as what do you want to do, but what do they like? What do they enjoy? So he does things like that. Um, we do a lot of Netflix and takeout. Um, we actually listen to podcasts together. We lay in bed and just turn off the lights and throw like two hours worth of podcasts on um, our favorite crime ones or, or whatnot. We go to Subway sometimes. We get a babysitter and split a six inch and just go walk around Target because who doesn't love Target? We've done face masks together. He's painted my toenails. <laughs> Gosh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Yes, yeah, he's painted my toenails for me. <laughs> um, we just things like that. Um, we work out together. You know, we we uh, maximize the gym childcare. We go play basketball. We put the kids in childcare. We just shoot hoops and play gotcha and games like that. What else? We leave a lot of notes for each other. Um, we, he leaves my favorite drinks in the fridge for me with a note. Um, just little things that don't really cost much. Um, we play Nintendo together. He loves Nintendo, like the old school games, like Galactica and all that. And, um, we'll sit there and play Nintendo and listen to nineties radio. So those are some yeah. things that we do that, you know, that we enjoy. Oh, you guys sound like a lot of fun. I wish we were neighbors so we could like double date. Oh, <laughs> you have no idea. We would have a blast. I promise. <laughs> that sounds super cool. Any marriage advice you want to leave? Best marriage advice you've ever heard? Best? <laughs> Gosh. Uh, hang in there, right? Um, I guess the best one would be when there's a major issue. Because like I said, I didn't think that there were issues when you got married. I thought everything was perfect, right? That's how it was going to be. Um, I've realized when there's major issues that come up in a relationship, make sure you take the correct steps to fix them. Um, a lot of times, you know, it's like trying to put a Band-Aid on something, a wound that required stitches. You know, eventually that Band-Aid will fall off and the problem is still there, but much worse. It's infected at that point. You're like, oh, I should have taken care of that, you know, right when it happened. So that is some marriage advice to take care of big issues in the moment instead of putting it to the side. Let's just get through it. We're too busy to worry about what's going on in our relationship. We got the kids, you know, so that's a big one. And just like I said earlier, um, keep it light. Life's already serious and hard, you know, try to keep each other laughing and smiling. Um, try to surprise each other just like you surprise your kid or you, you know, when they come off the bus, you're so excited to see your kids. How was your day? Be like that to your spouse. Because sometimes we just, you know, the mundane day, you forget about the spouse at the end of the day um, to make them a priority. And without, you know, that tight connection with your spouse, your kids end up suffering from that. And that's not just pray for each other, pray for each other out loud. Um, I think that's a big thing for us. We play, we pray together and we pray for each other. So that's about it. Well, that was beautiful. What a great example you are of all those things and especially of having fun in your marriage. And I hope the listeners got a few ideas and can apply them and enjoy their next date night, even if they have to plan it themselves. So thank you so much, yeah. Jamie, for taking time to talk to us. 
Thank you so much for having me, Laura. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the Married to Doctors podcast. Our mission is to make successful homes happier. To learn more or to share your story, visit our website at marriedtodoctors.com.